there. This Excel assignment is going to teach you how to calculate the mean using both a average formula and pivot tables and also how to use formulas in Excel to compute the weighted mean. So in this assignment we are looking at some data from the Great Harvest Bread Company and they're having difficulty with producing the right amount of bread. So they've never examined the demand for specific types of bread and they know from experience that the demand changes depending on the day of the week. So to better estimate their supply needs, they collected data on bread loaf sales over a three week period. So although they were able to organize this data into a nice spreadsheet, they're not very familiar with data analysis or how to make sense of the data. So we are going to figure out the demand of bread based on this um, data. And we're going to do that using the mean because the mean is going to tell us kind of the average, right? There's variation across different days, but if we average it out, we'll know roughly how much bread needs to be produced each type for each particular day. Now, of course, a longer period of data collection would be more ideal and would provide more accurate values because it would reduce sampling error, but we're just going to work with what we have. So the first thing that I want you all to do with me is compute the overall average for each type of bread. So the mean number of loaves of bread for each type, not necessarily looking at the different days of the week. So the way that we're going to do that, we're going to go to the bottom here. We're just going to type mean equals. Make sure you're in the in-store bread sales. And you see here too, just real quick, each row represents a different day of the week. There was three Sundays that data collection happened, three Mondays, three Tuesdays, three Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, because we looked at three weeks. Then you see the different types of bread listed along the top, and each number tells you the specific number of loaves of that particular bread on that particular day. So for instance, this 433 tells you that on one Sunday, they sold 433 loaves of honey whole wheat across the company. All right, so to get the average without, you know, I can show you how to do this the long way. First thing you could do, you could take equals the sum. You could add all these guys together. So highlight all those, hit enter. That tells you the total number of harvest white loaves sold across this three week period. And then you could divide it by, okay, well, we have. 22 rows, but we know this first row is taken up by days of the week. We also know it's a three week period, seven days a week, that's 21. We do equals this sum divided by 21, and we get 610 loaves on average per day. Or we can just go straight to the average formula and do equals AV, look for the word average, double click it, then highlight your data. Now you can either click and drag all the way up, or you can click this last value, scroll up, hold down the shift key, click the first value, and it highlights everything. And then hit enter and check it out. You get the same exact value. Now instead of doing this over and over and over again, Excel is smart. You can copy a formula over and it's going to apply it to the next column. So if we go like this, click, get the little plus sign, click and drag. Or you could just highlight and drag over and hit fill right. So these are your means for bread. Now let's go ahead and right click all these values, make sure they're all highlighted. Right click, format cells, number, and let's round to zero decimal places. Because we're not going to have a fraction of a loaf of bread, we're going to keep it at whole numbers. Then click OK. So again, I right clicked. Format cells, number, zero, OK. Now there's a bit of a problem here because if you look at this, these are the most popular types of bread that they sell, but it's worth noting that Cinnaburst is not sold on Wednesdays or Fridays. So these zeros are actually artificially deflating this mean. So it depends on what you're interested in, right? If you want to know the mean sales per day that it was available, you would want to get rid of these zeros because this makes it look like Cinnaburst is less popular than it is. But it's just the fact that it's not available on two days out of the week. So let's go ahead and correct this to make this be the actual mean number of loaves sold per day that it's available. 
So let's delete these zeros. And see, the mean automatically fixes itself. It's still using that original formula. And now we can see that Cinnaburst is actually quite popular, right, compared to the others even. It's pretty popular, um, more popular than it looked like when we had zeros there, when we actually just didn't sell it at all. It wasn't even available that day. So here are our means overall. Now we're going to use pivot tables now to do the mean number of loaves of bread for each type within each day of the week. Now you could do the averages for that by just highlighting each day, but that's going to take quite a bit of time. Pivot tables are going to make that much, much easier. Now it's worth noting that the pivot tables, no matter what you put here, if you put NA or zero or dash, 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 it's going to treat this as a zero and it's going to give you that mean that we had earlier in the pivot table. So for the purposes of looking at each specific day, it's useful. But if you want to look at the overall mean while getting rid of zeros and not letting those zeros bias your mean, you'd want to use the average formula that we just used. So let's do it. I'm going to go to insert, pivot table. And then you want to highlight all of your data, including the labels, all the way to there. Don't highlight your means because that will mess up your findings. So let go. We're going to do a new worksheet. And then you want to click OK. I'm going to label this mean sales per day. Let's make that capitalized so it is formatted. And then hit Enter. And now you've labeled it. So the first thing we want to do is click day of the week. If it does not automatically go into this rows section, click it and drag it to rows. Now we're going to click all the different bread types. If these aren't automatically going to the values, you want to click and drag it down to values. But it's working out for me right now. Make sure you click all of the breads. Whoa, what just happened? Oh, that got moved over here. Remove there. Now we're in business. And Cinnaburst, make sure it goes down here. Okay. So again, you want to make sure this says day of the week under rows and then values, sum of each different type of bread. And you'll see that reflected here as well. Now we don't want the sum or the count, we want the average. So we need to tell, or the mean, right? We need to tell Excel that's what we want. Two ways to do this. You could either click on the little arrow right next to where it says values. Click there, value field settings, average, OK. Or you can right click right there on the label in the table itself. Value field settings, average, OK. I find it easier to do it here, so that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> and just make sure that when you're done, it says average, not sum or count. Value field settings, average. And I'm just doing that for all of these because I want the mean or the average. Here we go, average. And finally, average. All right. Whoa, look, it actually did the right thing for Cineburst. I'm kind of excited right now. When I tried this earlier, those zeros screwed everything up. So that's good. I'm happy with that. We're good. That's cool. All right. So now I want to round all these values to the whole number. So let's highlight all this. Right click. Value field settings. Oops. Right click. Format cells. Number. Zero it out. And click OK. Now let's go ahead and highlight this whole thing. Go up to Home, Format, Auto Fit Column Width. And let's go ahead while we're here and center our data just because it looks much nicer that way. So now you have the mean number of loaves of bread for each type of bread within each day of the week without doing a ton of stuff in Excel. So for instance, if we want to know, okay, on any given Tuesday, how much harvest white should I stock? You should have 602 loaves. Okay, on any given Saturday, how much light wheat should I have? 609 loaves. And then you could see that across the entire week, Per day, you need about 610 loaves, but you see there's fluctuations there where there's more demand on Saturday and less demand on Sunday for that type of bread. Over here, you can see that the average of Cinnaburst, right? So we don't need to stock any on 
Wednesday because that's not a day that we sell it. Also Friday, that's not a day that we sell it. But on average, taking those days out of the equation, we sell about 268 loaves a day. So now they know how much bread to produce to keep up with demand. So now let's switch our focus to the catering data that we see right here in the catering tab. So this is going to be a weighted mean situation where we don't have all the raw data, but we do know the package, or we do have the raw data. We don't have just the means. We have the actual cost. We have how many times that was purchased. But we can't just go, oh, okay, let's add these up and divide by one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to tell the average cost of a package, but that's not going to tell you the average amount spent on packages for catering. To do that, you have to take these frequencies or these numbers sold this quarter into account. So the first thing we're going to find is the total number of catering purchases this quarter or the total number sold. So to do that, I'm going to put down here sum equals. So to do that, we're going to do equals SUM for sum. And then we're going to highlight all of those sales. So we're going to highlight all of these and hit, whoop. So equals sum. Ah, I didn't double click. Double click that bad boy. Then highlight all these, hit enter. So we sold 243 catering packages this quarter. Now we want to figure out the total value of catering purchases quarter. Again, you can't add these up to get that. You have to take each one of these and multiply it by how many you sold. So we're going to do this. And let's just put XF here because this is X and this is F. We're going to do equals the cost multiplied by how many were sold. So this quarter, we sold $1,430 worth of large tray o treats. Now, again, Excel's smart. We don't have to do this formula again and again. We can just go down to this little plus sign the bottom right, highlight down, or you can just highlight down, fill down in the home tab. Now that tells us, uh, for instance, $2,030 spent on fresh and fabulous breakfasts, $517 spent on great big cookie boxes, and so on. So to get the total value of catering purchases this quarter, now we can add these values together because these take those frequencies into account. So equals sum, double click it, highlight all the way down, hit enter. And this quarter, we um, sold $15,463 worth of catering. But we want to know the average. So I'm going to put the mean equals just to label my stuff. So if I ever need to go back and look at it, I'll know what was what. And just hit equals. Take that total amount spent, slash for division, the total number sold, hit enter. And on average, we sold $63.63 or .63 per catering package over the quarter. All right, so that is all I wanted to show you for this particular Excel practice assignment. I hope that you found this useful and that you're excited about shortcuts that Excel can give you that are better than busting out a calculator and doing this stuff by hand.